Some time ago now, the uh, the topic of snow on trees uh, came up in the Bryce Talk forum, and there was a bit of a debate about how you could go about it. I had a few ideas, though uh, it, it was it wasn't very satisfactory the results that I came up with, and I just sort of left it at that. However, subsequently, I've been thinking about this problem and have come up with a potential solution, at least a one way of doing it. So that's what we're going to explore in this video. It's going to use a hyper material, so I'll show you how to make that in the Deep Text Editor, and also it uncovers another of Bryce's quirks, of which it has many. So I'm going to begin by using one of these special trees created by Foley Pro, because I really like the shape of it. It's this one here, so you're looking for objects, special trees, special hemlock, and there it is. I'm going to go into this and edit it. The first thing I'm going to do is modify the trunk thickness so it's going to look like a bit of a bigger tree. Increase the number of leaves. Edit the trunk material. I want it uh, 100 diffusion, no ambience, no specularity, no metallicity. Bump height of just 10. And that's that modified. And in here for the leaves themselves we're going to create our hyper texture. So I'm going to begin with resetting to the default grey and give it 100 ambience. So snow is picking up a lot of ambient light. We're only going to use one light source for this and that's important because it's going to drive the diffusion very hard and that's going to create the illusion of the thick snow as I hope you'll see. So uh, the diffuse colour is going to be fully white and in this here, this blob, I'm going to put in my controller. So I want to hold the shift key down, click on the name, go to basic I'm going to modify check blue to be my hyper material so it's going to provide extreme output in the alpha channel which will drive this control and uh, I'm going to set this down at a low level I don't know what's going to work yet but it's going to be something like that so if you go into the deep texture editor now and just click on these corner ones here to open this up and the first thing is our function that's going to create a very high negative output so go to noise it wants to be type distance squared, mode uh, minimum, octaves 1, frequency of minus 1. So the way you can tell whether this has worked is if you turn off the colour and the bump you see this stripy pattern. Now this is a very negative, I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a difference control here with an, a, the nothing output. So if I just drag this into here and use difference and then select this one and then go to the noise and make this nothing I don't need any mode there, I don't need an octave and then the result of the difference here will mean that this now becomes positive instead of negative, you can't really see the difference between this one and that one because it's both out of range so it can't really display it so the next step is to make this slightly less positive because it's extreme value at the moment quite unmanageable so we take this component again which is just a nothing component I'm going to put a filter in here sign filter and then I can use the filter and the multiply command on the blend mode there to multiply this down to a manageable level so if I, if I get hold of my sine wave and flatten it you can see the stripes are changing in the final combination what you're looking to get is a broad spread of stripes and that shows the levels becoming you know, more manageable so if I could just get this to a value you need to see some color but you just need the stripes to be well spread out so that's my uh, guess something like that and then I'll check out of there so you can see now in the preview we've got a very bright one side here and now if I'm going to use alpha scaling I can use that low value there to bring it into a manageable level so you can see now there's a slight gradient band there so I check out of there and if I go to the white rendered preview you can see we've got some bright edges on here from the light however I'll give this a quick render now and you'll see that uh, it, this edge of this looks quite bright but it doesn't look spectacularly like it's laden with snow it's also a little bit slow on the render side so what I'm going to do is modify the document setup so I've got one to one aspect ratio I'm going to narrow the field of view so we've got mostly looking at tree so there you go it's mostly looking at tree now now the thing is that for some reason 
the the uh, hypermaterial isn't getting responded to by the light source when it's applied to these leaves and uh, well, I thought that was it it wasn't going to work uh, for some reason because of the way that trees are done in Bryce and because you don't directly access the material you have to go into the editor before you access the material however by chance I happen to discover if you go into the render options and switch boost light on then a bit of magic occurs and the material then is able to respond and the result of this is that the, the very, very low levels of of light hitting just the edge of the things on the anti-alias gives this heavily laden snow effect so it's not really built up any additional snow geometry but it does provide a fairly good impression that there's the leaves have become loaded with snow because the anti-aliasing effect fills out the pixels that would otherwise not be filled out the very high level of the hypermaterial diffuse output has meant that ev wherever the leaf was even if just on the edge of a pixel and it would be normally looking past it it's filled it out it's overcome whatever is around it and anti-aliased it out so there you go there's uh, something else to experiment with so if you throw a few of these in it looks quite a good effect the other thing to consider when you're looking at anti-alias controls is you have an AA radius so this is the, goes between one and two and will tend to make your render a bit softer so this this goes in on the the final render so you can see now you can create quite a different effect there because of these um, the very high level output when it gets anti-alias it starts to fill in that radius so there are a few things to experiment with there I suppose that's it really that's the end of the video I hope you found that interesting useful and uh, I'll try and remember to uh, keep trying switching boost light on and off in various uh, scenarios to see what effect it will have the same effect by the way I'll just add works for premium rendering so you might have to set the level down to see it rendering in a reasonable time and uh, AA radius also takes effect in premium rendering but you will see the effect from the very beginning because in premium rendering the anti-aliasing takes place as you go along so there is that advantage whereas if you're doing this in regular rendering you don't really get to see this effect right up until the point you get to the AA pass so there you go